Okay, maybe I'll talk now a little bit of why this is such a terrible mechanism for the brake. So there's your brake, right? The brake has a little pin on the back of the handle here. Okay, maybe if I do this, like you can see it. Do you see that little pin here, right in here? Do you see that? Okay. So that, believe it or not, lines up with another pin, this pin here, and pushes this, and that is what actuates your switch. How ridiculous having two pins touching each other. These things will often slide past each other and just not work. It's another, you know, example of terrible, terrible Lucas engineering. <laughs> Anyways, not much we can do about it. And that's not our problem, interestingly. That's, you know, touch wood working. Okay, guys, well, <laughs> as is the case with all things uh, Lucas, um, this little switch here, as it turns out, I guess when I reassembled it in the bike, there was a little plastic pusher on the end here and it just snapped off. Okay. So what we're now going to need to do is repair this switch. I've taken a look online and I don't see anybody that's making replacement pieces for this. So yeah, so that's going to be the next bit. Otherwise we're not going to have a working brake light. The good news is we now have a stop switch that works, but our uh, rear brake light's not working. So we definitely need to fix this as well. So we're going to try to figure something out to make this work now. So uh, yeah, hey, let's get after it. Okay, I've taken a look, a, a look at this uh, gizmo a little bit more and unfortunately this piece of copper is actually riveted uh, on and you can see the rivet there the opposite side of my finger right see that rivet yeah it's riveted on there so that doesn't come apart easily um, to say the least now could we drill that out I guess we could depends on how carried away we want to get so I think what I'm going to do uh, come on, keep focusing here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do to get that pin out of here and put a new pin in into this housing here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend back this little tab, that end of the tab here. I'm going to I'm going to bend that back carefully, um, and then we'll try to pop that pin out that's in there, and then see if we can devise something to go in its place. Um, and then when we put this back together, we'll have to bend that tab back. So that's what we're going to try to do. Whether that works or not, I don't know, but that's what I'm going to, I'm going to try. Okay, guys, we're going to give it a go here. So who knows, maybe we're going to completely ruin this thing, but uh, we're going to give it a go and see what we can do. So let me start up here. First of all, I'm going to try to hold this down with my finger. And what I'm trying to do is bend this tab back. Again, this shaft goes through right through there. And kind of push it with my finger where it's broken uh, but what we want to do is we want to bend this back just a little bit see if I can grab that I think I'm going to have to grab a pick to do that okay I'm just going to grab a pick here and lift that up what I can do is actually push it through this way and then kind of grab it with my fingernail there we go I got it with my fingernail I'll put the pick there just to hold this Okay, so now what we're going to try to do is just bend this tab back a little bit. Okay. Oh, crap, that broke. You bugger. Oh, God, this stuff is terrible, man. Okay, now we got to fall, solve, solve some other problem here. So let's just put this back. Let's see if we can get our pin out. Yeah, we got our pin out now. Okay, well, hey, let's uh, let's continue on. Let's see what we can do here. So we're, now what we need to do is find a new pin. Look at how crappy this is. Who builds anything out of that? I mean, that's just nuts. Anyways, um, yeah, that's the process. Let's continue on. Okay, guys. Uh, well, you know what I've decided is that this is such a terrible, terrible design. Rather than trying to fix this piece or even grab another one, and by the way, I looked online to find another one. I can't find these anywhere. There's probably a good reason for that. They're terrible. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I am actually going to fit, uh, I'm going to fit instead uh, a Honda. <laughs> this is uh, for a small Honda motorcycle brake switch. So there's the switch on the end there. You see the push button. 
uh, and our connectors. So those are going to go, we're going to run a separate cable for those into here, uh, like that. And, um, and, but to do that, to get that onto the bike, what we have to do is we actually have to drill this slightly. So this is where the handle would go, where the brake handle would go. I've got the brake handle off. And this switch needs to go into here so that this is protruding outside of this hole. But as you can see, this is longer than this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, you know, it's a little bit of sacrilege, but we're going to drill this opening here so this can point out this way. And we're just going to simply run a separate brake line, uh, a brake switch line for the brake switch, which will then be reliable and will work. Not only that, but a common part of every brakes we can go buy another one. So that's going to be the process that I use on here, rightly or wrongly, because I'm fixing this old Lucas thing is, well, I think this thing was essentially broken the day it was made. It's such terrible design um, that I, it's, yeah, and almost impossible to repair. So um, I'm going to just do that and we're going to see what happens. Okay, guys, so as mentioned, we're drilling that hole so we can get the cable in there. So let's get after it here. I'm just going to do this now at 5 sixteenths. Okay. okay, let's give that a go now. Ah, there we go. That works much, much better. That works perfect. That's ideal. What a perfect fit that is, I think. So that's good. All right. So now we're going to do a little bit of a test it before we put this whole thing together. We're going to put our... Uh, brake handle back on there. We're going to temporarily hook this up to here and just see if we get a reliable, you know, brake light. Okay guys, I just wanted to show this to you a little bit. Um, on the brake handle itself, there is an adjusting screw. And this adjusting screw is normally way, 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 way out. And it was designed to hit that little plastic tab, okay, on the, on the old switch on this thing. Um, but for this one, for the, uh, call it the Honda Retrofit, Honda Switch Retrofit, what you we need to do is we don't want to have this situation of, you know, a little pointy thing touching the other little pointy thing. So what you do instead is just simply back this out till it's entirely flush. Just get it, not all the way out, just flush. So get it right about there. There we go. Just nice and flush. Because then you've got this entire surface that can then catch that pin. And that's all that we need. We, the whole Lucas idea of having a pointy object hit another pointy object, you know, doesn't make any sense. This is going to work way better. So now what we want to do is just retro or just go and put our uh, brake lever back in. We first have to align our sort of a little hydraulic ram for the brakes. Is that what it's called? Oh no, it's a little push rod for the hydraulics. And then put our pin in. Uh, pin actually bolt, I guess you'd say. And then we're going to put the nut on there and give her a go. But first off, you can kind of see how this is going to work. I think you can see that, okay? So on, off, on, off. And you can see the pin in there actuating as we do this. So as we take as we put the brakes on, the brakes are gonna are gonna work. At least that's the theory. Let's hook up a test lead and just make sure the theory is accurate before we completely button this thing up. Okay, guys. So we've just got some test leads hooked up here at the moment, just to go and see is this thing gonna work or not. So we've got our new cable on there, retrofitted for the brake lights. Okay, and what if you can you see the tail light at the same time? On off on off so yeah just you know doing that lights on take my finger my hand off of it lights off very reliably so we're building a little honda reliability to this old 1977 triumph i'm sorry guys i know that's sacrilege it really is i should be using nothing but genuine triumph lucas parts 
but you know and if i could buy one maybe i would even do it but they're just like unobtainium and it's unobtainium because it was just a terrible design boy it looks like i've got a mess going on here doesn't it <laughs> anyways you know what let's button it all up and see what it looks like and make sure she performs as good in reality as she does in this test setup so that's the next step Okay guys, before we button this thing up, we have a little bit of surgery that we need to do in a few different areas. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna nip these wires off for this switch. And we don't have to worry about doing anything with them because they're not hooked up to any power. So we can just nip them off. These are the old, these are the, are the lines that we're going to, the break, going to this brake switch. And uh, yeah, so this is all gonna be thrown out. That's going to be that's going to be garbage, um, and uh, I, you'll notice I have put a little bit of black tape in there. That's just so that when this goes on to the handlebar, that there isn't anything touching anything. So uh, the other bit of surgery we need to do is down a little bit lower here. Let me bring you down a little bit. So we need to do a little bit of surgery here as well, I think. So because we're I'll get my test leads off of here. We don't need this on here at all. This is just stuff I'd put on just for testing. This is where we need to hook these leads up to. We need to hook them up to there. These are no longer required. So I think what I'll do is I'll just maybe tape those back out of the way um, so that we don't need them um, rather than just cutting these off. It's tempting to just cut them off, but again, if anybody really wanted to put that stock switch back on, I guess, you know, uh, yeah. Anyways, what we'll need to do is we will need to, to nip this off here. Uh, we'll definitely need to nip, nip this end off so that we can actually connect some leads on here for the switch. So let's nip that off there, right there. Okay, good. Those are the leads that are going to need to connect up to here. So what we'll do is we'll put some connectors on there. We've got butt-end connectors here. If I can find someone to fit, that's what we'll do. Otherwise, we'll just put some on both ends like we did for these. Um, and uh, obviously, we have to run our lead through here as well. So hopefully, that's long enough. If not, we'll add some length to this, and that's also not an issue. So we'll, let's carry on. Okay, guys, well, we all, we've got the whole thing together now, other than obviously the headlamp isn't back on. But before I totally buttoned it up, I wanted to just show you again what we did. So um, on the switch side, which is the Honda switch that we've installed, um, I did have to cut the ends off of there and put new ends on there. I also put, of course, new ends on the uh, line side as well and got them all nicely secured together. So that's good. We've got the brake lever back on. Um, um, so it's just time for doing a test. So we're just going to do a final test. We'll turn the key on so we got power. Uh, we'll come over here and try the brakes. And I'll try to hold the camera back so you can see the brake light the same time I squeeze it. So I'm squeezing her now. You see the brake light goes on and off, on and off, on and off. Yeah, so we've built a little. And there's there's the line. There's the new um, There's the new lead for the brake lines. That's the hole that we had to drill right there, okay? And that hole goes through to here to that little pin right there. Do you see that little that little pin? I'll put my finger there so hopefully it'll focus. That little pin, so when that pin is depressed, brakes are off. When it's not depressed, and we're depressing the brake lever, okay, that pin pops out and the lights go on. So that's how that switch works. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. I was considering putting some uh, black um, shrink wrap tubing on here instead of the gray, but then I took a look and I realized the old cable, uh, here's part of the old cable here, is actually gray as well. So does it really matter? So um, probably not. So I think that uh, we're probably fine just to leave it the way it is. I think it looks good. It, uh, it's certainly going to function, and that's the main deal. So anyways, hopefully this, uh, this video helped somebody else that has a similar problem with these, uh, with these brake switches. And uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I could really use some more subscribers. That would be the biggest, uh, biggest thank you I could get is if you subscribe. Um, also, please like the video, and most of all, leave a comment. Let me know, hey, maybe there was some other way I could have solved this problem better. Please let me know uh, any thoughts or ideas you have. I'm just trying to learn myself. So I appreciate all the comments and I 
reply to every comment. So, um, yeah. Okay, guys, have a good one, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.